Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the DM's Guild Review. We've got five more adventures to get to today and I cannot wait to get started. I also wanted to say that I tried to do this in a little bit of a different way than previous ones. So if you noticed or didn't like it or did like it, let me know. I'm going to try to tell this as a story instead of just going over the adventure as a whole. So let's get into the first adventure, Bounty Hunt, Nasher. By Jason Noonan. It's about a four hour adventure for first or fourth level characters. In a bustling town where danger lurked around every corner, the local law office struggled to maintain order. The town's guard system was weak and criminals took advantage of the chaos. One such criminal was Nasher, a ruthless gang leader known for cruelty and cunning. His gang terrorized the town and local law office sought to end his reign of terror. A group of brave adventurers, tired of the lawlessness, decided to take matters into their own hands. They began their investigation by asking around town for any information about Nasher and his gang. Rumors circulated about a cave complex just outside town where the gang hid their ill-gotten gains. The caves were shown to the adventurers by an elderly person who had just lost a family member to Nasher's cruel actions. The adventurers prepared for the dangerous journey ahead, determined to avenge the innocent lives lost. As they trekked through the hills, the adventurers marveled at the vast, wooded area surrounding them. Their journey led them deeper into rocky terrain, and the air grew dry and dusty. Twelve miles north of town, they finally discovered the entrance to the cave complex they had been seeking. The adventurers cautiously walked up to the massive rocks surrounding the cave entrance. The air was filled with the sound of crackling fire, the aroma of food, and voices of two members of Nasher's gang. The adventurers listened carefully, picking up valuable information about a hidden stash of gold within the cave. The adventurers decided it would be best to sneak up on the gang members, so they tried not to be seen. They carefully scaled the large rocks by the entrance, hearts pounding with anticipation. A narrow passageway led them deeper into the caves, which were filled with broken boxes and glass that they had to navigate through. Amidst the debris, they discovered a spell book containing powerful spells, comprehend language, and shatter. Finally, they find themselves into a large natural cavern where Nasher and his group were planning their next move around a table. Prepared for a confrontation, the adventurers revealed themselves to the gang. Nasher, ever cunning, tried to negotiate his way out of the situation, offering gold and the lives of the gang members in exchange for his freedom. The adventurers were committed to doing the right thing, so they turned down Nasher's offer and fought hard with the gang. Nasher attempted to escape, but the adventurers were relentless in their pursuit. In the end, they beat the gang and catch Nasher, ensuring he would have to pay for what he's done. After winning the battle, the adventurers looked for the gold stash that the gang members had mentioned. After investigating, they discover 100 gold pieces and valuable items such as a golden rose and a golden apple. They also find a mysterious map that led to a dungeon and hinted at more adventures to come. Returning to town with Nasher and his gang, the adventurers were hailed as heroes. The local law office kept its promise and rewarded them with gold for their efforts. As the town began to rebuild and find a sense of security, they knew that their work was far from over. With the newfound map, they prepared to embark on their journey to the next daring adventure. So what do you guys think about that one? For literally five or six pages, there's so much that you could do with it. All it is a cave, a confrontation, it could be as small as a random encounter or you could build it up like I did. <laughs> but moving straight up into Bound in Chains by Maro Gauch. You guys may have heard the name before. It's uh, about a five to six hour adventure meant for a level six to eight character. In the town of Kalieki, the party must pay more attention to a significant banner for which they're arrested for not honoring as they're brought before the Praetor who sentences them to repent at Katina Rock, also known as the Temple of Reformation. A group of adventurers find themselves captured and imprisoned within the formidable Katina Rock. As the cold metal of their chains bites into their wrists and ankles, 
they face the daunting task of escaping their confinement. To make matters worse, the imposing Praetora Benin rules over nearby city of Kaluk with an iron fist, leaving them little hope for the future. Upon their arrival at Katina Rock, the adventurers are taken to a place known as the Chapel of Sinners. The two-story building consists of a single room filled with bunker beds and a small library. The imposing Ava, a guard who spends most of her time in a nearby tower, oversees their stay. Here, the group learns of their scholars still trapped within the confines of Cantina Rock. Soon after, the adventurers have to undergo a series of tests meant to help figure out their roles in society and the groups. The first trial, a test of strength, pushes their physical limits. The second trial, a test of intelligence, challenges mental capabilities. And the third trial, a test of dexterity, evaluates their agility and finesse. As they pass each test, a mark on their foreheads painted by Ava glows in different colors. After overcoming the initial trials, the party comes to a massive stone door adorned with glowing runes. One rune remains unlit, and a small stone basin stands on a pillar in front of the door. The inscription on the pillar hints at the need for sacrifice. Knowing that the liquid in the basin is highly toxic, one party member must bravely choose to drink it. Upon doing so, the final rune illuminates and the door opens. A white light engulfs the party, destroying the chains that bind them. Though free, the group must now deal with the consequences of their actions. After the trial's completion, the GM may award them with perks of magical knowledge related to the challenges, the roles, or even sense of teamwork related items. Awakening at the foot of Katina Rock's cliff, the party is free again, but at what cost? Exhausted and weary, they contemplate their options. With the other scholars still locked up in Katina Rock and Praetor Benin's oppressive rule over Kalik, the adventurers decide to put their newfound teamwork skills to the test by pledging to overthrow the theocracy and free their fellow prisoners. As the group embarks on their perilous journey, they face a seemingly insurmountable task. Bound together by their experiences with Katina Rock, the adventurers must now draw upon their collective strength and wisdom to bring about lasting change for themselves and the world around them. The adventurers keep going as the heroes rise to the challenge that fate has preordained for them. So what did you guys think of that one? I thought it was kind of fun. It's literally just a prison break, and if you guys haven't done one of those yet, just throw it in on your party. Especially make it a stupid reason, like I didn't see that flag. But moving on to the very next one, we've got Three Orcs and a Baby by Dale Zawada. Another one of my favorites, they're a top-rated DM skilled author, and they like to make adventures for a little bit higher levels, so I love to see that it's level 5th through 7th, and it's about a five hour adventure, so no reason you can't give it a try. A group of adventurers found themselves in a quaint town. Derelict Nightbreeze, a likable elf and proprietor of Potions and Lotions, Potion Store approached them. Derelict has a special request for the party to intercept a mysterious cargo from a group known as the Night Masks. The adventurers prepare for a wagon ambush as they journey towards the location. They manage to overpower the night masks and discover an unexpected treasure inside the crate. A giant egg with strange markings. The egg began to hatch as the party looked on, revealing a baby triceratops. The adorable creature bonded with the adventurers who showed it affection and it quickly became a part of their journey. The baby Triceratops proved to be a handful running away, spitting up on the adventurers, and nibbling on their belongings. However, it also proved to be a valuable ally when the party encountered a dangerous magical couple on the run, Madrigal and Lyra. The couple wanted to buy the Triceratops for all the wrong reasons, but the party wouldn't let them get rid of their new friend. A fight broke out and the baby Triceratops tried to help the adventurers fight against the magical duo in a brave way. After the fight, the group returned to Derelict's potions and lotions shop to finish their business. To their surprise, Derelict revealed that he wanted the Triceratops shell, not the creature himself. He explained that the shell would allow him to brew powerful and expensive potions for his shop, and the adventurers were free to keep the baby Triceratops. However, their moment of joy was short-lived as Lord Mortimus Grimwell, a vampire lord, 
who has been waiting for the package, bursts into the shop demanding his stolen property and seeking revenge. He summoned three ghouls to attack the party while taunting them for their thievery. The battle was fierce, but the adventurers persevered, with the baby triceratops proving their worth again. When the party defeated Lord Mortis Grimwell, they discovered that he may not have been a real vampire. This suggests that a more significant threat may be still hiding in the shadows. After the two groups met, the baby Triceratops grew up with the explorers and became an essential part of their journey. Over time, it increased in size and strength, reflecting the party's growth and experiences. The threat of the Night Masks and their council members loomed over the adventurers, providing an ongoing challenge as they navigated through a world filled with danger, intrigue, and unexpected friendships. Through it all, the bond between the party and their baby Triceratops remained strong and a testament to the power of friendship and growth potential, even in the most unlikely places. And as the adventurers continued their journey, they knew they would face whatever challenges lay ahead with their beloved Triceratops. Okay, you gotta admit that's an awesome adventure just to be able to introduce a pet. It doesn't have to be a Triceratops. What if it was a dragon, some sort of like super cool scorpion? Who knows? But this is great. This is a great way for you to be able to introduce one more thing to your party to like maybe introduce a tank or if they don't have a magic user. I love it. Next up is a back-to-back -back adventure taking place in the exact same location by the exact same creator, Dale Zawada. Bear Dusk Till Dawn for 8th to 10th level adventurers for another 4 to 6 hours as well. In the once thriving city of Burdusk, a mysterious darkness enveloped the town. The people lived in fear as undead creatures roamed the streets, and the fog grew thicker each day. Mayor Griffith Hawkins, desperate for help, enlisted a group of brave adventurers to rid the city of its curse. The adventurers began their journey at the Tiefling Twister, a local tavern where they met Garak, a muscular half-orc, and a group of drunk farmers who have gathered to fight the undead. Garak gave the adventurers weapons made to fight vampires and warned them that a vampire siege was coming. Suddenly, the windows shattered, and vampire spawn swarmed into the tavern, quickly taken care of by the drunken clientele. Now that the immediate threat was gone, Garrick told the adventurers to check out Twilight Hall, where the Harpers used to hang out, because he thought that was where the darkness came from. Upon reaching Twilight Hall, the adventurers discovered the once great building in ruins. A massive boulder blocked the entrance, etched with a riddle that, when solved, summoned four doppelgangers. After defeating the doppelgangers, the entrance to the Twilight Hall was revealed. Inside, the adventurers encountered a treacherous bridge above a dark pit and swarms of bats that attacked them from chandeliers above. They skillfully crossed the bridge and made their way to a staircase leading to the vampire's lair. When the adventurers went down the stairs, they found themselves in a room full of bones facing a group of skeletons. After overcoming this challenge, they finally arrived at Lord Nightridge's lair an opulent room adorned with tapestries and velvet sofas, where a wooden casket lay on a raised platform. As the adventurers slowly moved towards the box, they either got close without Lord Nightridge noticing, or accidentally let him know they were there. Regardless, the final confrontation begins. The vampire made fun of the adventurers and told them that he was a member of the Night Masks, and planned to make Burdusk his new hunting ground. The battle was intense, with the adventurers relying on their wits, strength, and magical weapons provided by Garak to defeat the formidable foe. In the end, Lord Nightridge was vanquished. With the vampire's death, the darkness that had plagued Burdusk began to lift. The adventurers collected their loot, including the vampire's fang, cape, macrame art, and night mask medallion before returning to Mayor Griffith Hawkins with the good news. As the citizens of Bear Dusk returned from East Haven and started rebuilding their city, they knew they owed their newfound peace to the brave adventurers. Though the shadows still harbored potential threats from the Night Masks, the people of Bear Dusk had hope once more. The story of the adventurers and their triumph 
over Lord Nightrage became a tale of courage and heroism forever etched in the annals of Bear Dusk history. So that's pretty cool. And especially since it's a follow-up adventure that you could lead into after giving your players a handy little Triceratops pet. T-Rex? Dragon? Who knows, it's all up to you. Yeah, I really love that previous adventure. <laughs> but going right into the very next one, we've got Festival of the Harvest Moon by Michael Newman. Now this one's a bit of a longer one, and I said I didn't really like to do these, but I'm doing it anyway. We've got a level 1 to level 3 adventure. So it's a couple of adventures all wrapped up in one, but it takes place over the annual Harvest Moon Festival. In the peaceful town of Saxondale, preparations were underway for the annual Harvest Moon Festival. The organizers, Rigby Don, a friendly human man with blonde hair and a short beard, was bustling around the town center, making sure everything was in place for the grand event. The festival brought joy and excitement to the townsfolk, and Rigby wanted to ensure that it was perfect for everyone. As the festival began, the air was filled with the sweet scent of freshly baked treats, laughter, and the sounds of merriment. A group of adventurers were drawn to the party-like atmosphere and decided to join in. As they wandered around the festival grounds, they came across various interesting characters, such as Percy Windbreaker, the friendly owner of a coconut stand, and Marion Dockhand, an old woman who had recently lost her husband, Cook. The adventurers also encountered Dalkin Tat, a flamboyant human man with long black hair and a long black mustache. He was an entertainer and had once been the assistant to the famous magician, Malacent. Dalkin was excited to invite the adventurers to his magic show, which he said would be once in a lifetime experience. Meanwhile, Wilmar Brown, the local tavern owner, was growing increasingly desperate. His business was struggling and he was in debt to a dangerous criminal organization known as the Burning Door Brigade. He hoped that the festival would provide a much needed boost to his business and help him repay his debt. The adventurers gathered around the stage on the evening of the magic show, eager to witness Dalkin's performance. As the curtains rose, Malicent, a green-skinned tiefling magician with large curly horns and a flair for the dramatic, appears on stage. The show was mesmerizing, filled with dazzling illusions and incredible feats of magic. However, as the show reached its climax, something went terribly wrong. Malicent vanished in a puff of smoke, leaving behind an eerie silence and a sense of dread. In the aftermath of the magic show, the town of Saxondale was left shaken. The adventurers decided to investigate the mysterious disappearance of Malicent, hoping to discover what had happened. As they started looking, they ran into Paviata Mangleworth, the short-tempered dwarven town guard. Paviata was responsible for the safety and security of Saxondale, and she was determined to get to the bottom of the strange events that had taken place. The adventurers' investigation took them to town's outskirts, where they come across a group of criminals under the leadership of a young man named Parfait. After a tense confrontation, the adventurers learned that the ruffians were responsible for the chaos that had unfolded during the magic show. They didn't like the yearly party, so they took Malicent hostage to ruin it. The adventurers followed the bad guys to their hideout because they were determined to save Malicent and bring order back to Saxondale. Along the way, they met Griffith, the fisherman, a dirty man who gave them important information about where the bad guys were. With Griffith's help, the adventurers reached the ruffian's lair and fought a fierce battle against their foes. Ultimately, they beat the bad guys and saved Malicent, who is unharmed but scared by what he has been. As the adventurers returned to Saxondale, they were hailed as heroes. The town celebrated their victory and when the festival started again, they were even more excited than before. They thanked the adventurers for their help and invited them to return to Saxondale as honored guests for future festivals. In the end, the Harvest Moon Festival was a resounding success, and the people of Saxondale rejoiced in the merriment and camaraderie in the event brought. Wilmer Brown's tavern saw an influx of patrons, and he managed to make enough money to pay off his debts to the Burning Door Brigade. Wilmer was thankful to the adventurers that helped him, so he gave them free food and lodging whenever they came to Saxondale in the future. 
The adventurers, satisfied with their accomplishments and the bond that they had forged in Saxondale, decided to stay in the town for a while. They took the opportunity to get to know the other characters better. May Peltfeather, a young priestess whom the Kuatoa had captured during the festival, became a close friend and confidant to the group, offering them healing and spiritual guidance. They also spent time with Genevieve Beckelback, a farmer's wife who had suffered an attack by the Kuatoa. The adventurers helped her get better after she was hurt and helped her fix up her broken farm. Genevieve was grateful for their help and became an invaluable source of information about the region, sharing her knowledge about the land and its resources. As the time passes, the adventurers continue to protect the town of Saxondale from various threats and challenges. They found out that a rival group of criminals was planning to take over the town. Working with Paviata Mangleworth to stop them because of the work of the adventurers, Saxondale remained a peaceful, prosperous place where bad things couldn't happen. The Harvest Moon Festival became a renowned event throughout the region, attracting visitors far and wide. The townsfolk of Saxondale never forgot the bravery and heroism of the adventurers who had saved their festival and town, and whenever their journeys took them, the adventurers always held a special place in their hearts for the town of Saxondale and its warm, welcoming people. As for Dalkintat, his role in the disappearance of Malicent was eventually revealed. Although he had not been directly involved in the kidnapping, his jealousy and desire for fame had led him to collaborate with the ruffians. Disgraced and shunned by his fellow performers, Dalkin left Saxondale in search of a new life, a cautionary tale of the perils of ambition and envy. The story of the Harvest Moon Festival and the brave adventurers who saved it became a beloved tale passed down through the generations, and the festival itself, a symbol of unity and hope, continued to thrive, a testament to the enduring power of friendship. Well, that was pretty fun, y'all. Especially if you were gonna have something like the Wild Beyond the Witchlight be your campaign setting, this would be awesome to start off with. You already kinda have the carnival-esque setting that you could paint a picture with. And if you like to do what I do, then I just take like two or three adventures that look kinda the same, smash them all together, and then it's a new adventure kinda. You just take the best parts and then throw it in. That's what I'd do if I had Wild Beyond the Witch Light and this adventure put together. But with all that being said, I've probably rambled on enough for today. I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, Make sure to like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you later.